Hello everyone and welcome to this Rust webinar on Sargassum mapping with Sentinel-3. So first, uh, I would like to thank you for uh, attending uh, today's webinar and uh, we are going to explore together how we can process Sentinel-3 products in the SNAP software to uh, detect and map Sargassum rafts in the Caribbean. So um, this uh, webinar is uh, going to last about an hour and a half, and uh, it's also being recorded and will be available on our YouTube uh, channel and our training portal after the session. So I will start with a uh, introduction to the RUS service. Then I will uh, present you the Sentinel-3 mission and uh, associated products. After that, uh, I will show you today's exercise about mapping Sargassum rafts in the Caribbean. And at the end of the session, there will be some time dedicated to a question and answer session. So during the webinar, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to write them down on the WebEx chat and I will go through uh, your questions at the end of the session, Alan will replay them. So let's start with the Rust service introduction. So Rust stands for Research and User Support for Sentinel Core Products. The project is funded by the European Commission and managed by the European Space Agency. Rust provides free and open scalable platform in a powerful computing environment, hosting a suite of open source toolboxes pre-installed on virtual machines to handle and process data acquired by the Copernicus Sentinel satellites constellation. So what does it mean? It means that with uh, all the Sentinel sat satellites orbiting our Earth, the challenge now is not about data availability, but more about data storage and processing. And so that's why the Rus service offers virtual machines so that the Rus users uh, have enough storage capacity and processing capacity in order to conduct their own studies. Rus uh, also has a specialized remote sensing help desk to help you uh, in processing the Earth observation data. And we also have a wide offer of training activities in the form of webinars like today's session or face-to-face -face training events. So the RUS service is accessible through two main platforms. First, the RUS Copernicus web portal is where uh, you will find all the information about the RUS project. On this portal, you will also be able to create an account and ask for a virtual machine to replay today's webinar, for example. There is also a RUS training website. So this is where uh, you will be able to be to have updates on uh, upcoming training events. Finally, there is also our uh, Rus Copernicus training YouTube channel. So the Rus project has been operational for more than three years now, and we have uh, delivered more than 40 webinars. All the previous webinars are hosted on our YouTube channel, and I highly advise you to visit uh, this channel as I am sure that you will be able to find uh, videos that will be of interest for your work. So uh, now a little bit more information about the Sentinel-3 constellation and um, the associated products. So the Sentinel-3 
mission is dedicated to mapping and monitoring our Earth, ocean, and land surfaces. So the Sentinel-3 satellites provide a wealth of global data with a great accuracy for key environmental parameters. These parameters include the ocean and land surfaces color, the sea and land surface temperature, the sea topography and sea level rise. So the data acquired by uh, this mission are used as input data to the Copernicus Marine Environment Monitoring Service. This mission also ensures the measurement continuity between previous and future Earth uh, observation missions. So Sentinel-3 is a European Earth observation mission. It's a dual satellite mission carrying three distinct payloads, SRAL and MWR, to quantify the sea topography. SLSTR is the sea and land temperature radiometer. OLCHI is the ocean and land color instrument. So as I was saying, um, this mission is a constellation of two satellites, Sentinel-3A that was launched in 2016 and Sentinel-3B uh, that was launched in 2018. Both satellites are working as a pair to ensure better Earth surface coverage and revisit time. So now a few more words about the OLCHI instrument. So OLCHI stands for Ocean and Land Color Instrument. It's an optical instrument, so basically a space camera that measures solar radiation reflected by the Earth. So it only works during daytime as there is no sunlight during nighttime. This sensor has a medium ground spatial resolution of 300 meters in 21 spectral bands. The width of the swath is of 1,270 kilometers. And the revisit uh, time is less than two days when the two satellites are functioning. The main objectives of this sensor is to screen the ocean and land surfaces to harvest biological information. For example, for uh, the marine environment monitoring, such as algal blooms, fishing, and sediments. It also has land monitoring applications to monitor uh, the vegetation health or the snow and ice cover. And this uh, instrument is also used for atmospheric studies, such as aerosol tracking and clouds monitoring. The second payload, SLSTR, is a dual scan temperature radiometer. So this instrument has two different view angles for improved atmospheric corrections. It has different channels in the visible and shortwave infrared with a ground resolution of half a kilometer and additional channels in the thermal infrared part of the spectrum with a ground resolution of a kilometer. The main objective of this instrument is to provide reference sea surface temperature or SST from space at a one kilometer ground resolution. One of the main applications of this instrument uh, is also active fire detection. Finally, the two last payloads are SRAL and MWR. SRAL is the Sentinel Radar Altimeter. And MWR is the microwave radiometer that quantifies the water content in the atmosphere. These instruments are dedicated to studying the ocean topography, such as, for example, the mean sea level, the wave height, or the wind speed. The parameter to be measured, amongst others, are the sea level anomaly, the sea surface height, or the significant wave height. 
In this webinar, we are going to focus on the use of Alchi products for ocean monitoring. So, um, a few words about the Alchi products. These products are available in uh, two resolutions. The full resolution at 300 meters, which is the native resolution of the sensor. And uh, there are also reduced resolution products at a 1.2 um, kilometer ground resolution. Then uh, two levels of products are freely available to the users. First, the level 1B products contain the ortho-geolocated top of atmosphere upwelling radiances for the 21 spectral bands spatially resampled onto an evenly spaced cross-track grid. So what does it mean? It basically means uh, that these products contain the amount of light sensed by Olchi in its 21 spectral bands. These products also have information on the illumination and observation geometry. They also contain meteorological auxiliary data, such as wind speed, atmospheric temperature profile, and uh, they also have quality and classification flags, such as whether the observation was made over land or over the ocean, um, if it was affected by sun glint, etc. Then a non-ground processing chain processes the level 1B product to uh, turn them into level 2 products. And here for the level 2 products, there are two different processing. So one processing dedicated to ocean and sea surfaces and one processing dedicated to land monitoring. So in the water uh, processing products, you will find the water living reflectances for 16 spectral bands. You will also find key ocean color parameters, such as the chlorophyll and total suspended matter concentration and the associated errors. You will also find uh, the quality and classification flags. The land processing products contain vegetation indexes, the integrated water va vapor along atmospheric profile, and again, quality and classification flags. In this webinar, we are going to use the level 1B products. So we are uh, going to process this level 1B product to detect sargassum rafts. So since we are uh, going to work with this level 1B product, I'm going to give you a little bit more information about the Olchi spectral bands. So 21 spectral bands that are spanning the visible spectrum and the near infrared spectrum. Here. So in this webinar, I'm not going to go through all bands individually with their function. But later on, when we are going to work on the SNAP software, uh, we will generate red, green, blue views. And to generate these views, we will use the fourth, sixth, and eighth band of Olchi. Has their um, central wavelength is, are located in the blue, green, and red part of the spectrum. Another important aspect about the Olchi uh, products is their timeliness. So Olchi measurements are uh, available in different timeliness. First, within three hours after sensing, the near real-time products are released. These products are intended to users who need quick access to the data, such as uh, forecasting systems, for example. 
But these products may be incomplete and may not have the full data quality. Then, a few days after uh, the OLCHI measurement, the offline products are released. These products are intended for most data users. Um, their granule length is of three minutes for full resolution products and one pole to pole half orbit for reduced resolution products. A third timeliness is the reprocessing one. For this one, there are no time constraints as reprocessing of Sentinel-3 products are performed when necessary. So, for example, when there is a major processing algorithm update, the space uh, agency can decide to reprocess all existing Sentinel-3 Alchi products. So, the data uh, format of these products is the standard archive format for Europe, called the save format. So it means that those products are folders containing a collection of files. The measurement and annotation are stored in NetCDF files. And on top of that comes a manifest file that explains the contents of the package. So this will become clearer once we have downloaded uh, Sentinel-3 products and start um, explore them within the SNAP software. Also, uh, Sentinel-3 products have a particular naming convention. So these products have a very long name that contains a wealth of information about the data within the products. So it means that by simply reading the product name, you uh, can retrieve a lot of information without even downloading the product. So here is a typical Sentinel-3 Alchi product name. From the three first characters, you can know uh, the mission name. So either Sentinel-3A or Sentinel-3B. The two following characters give information about the instrument ID. So for example, OL for OLCHI, SL for SLST Air, and SR for SRAL. Then comes the processing level, one or two. And then the data tap ID in Cyan here. So for today's product, which are the top of atmosphere radiances full resolution, the data type ID is EFR, but other data type ID such as WFR or WST also exist. The two following chains of characters are actually two dates. Uh, and they are the start and end date of the granule in UTC time. So here, for example, you can see that this product has been acquired on the 20th of June, 2018, between 1 p.m. 58 minutes, 49 seconds, and 2 p.m. 1 minute, 49 seconds. The following chain of character is the time of processing of this granule in UTC time. So how are all Qi products distributed? So first of all, there is a free access to all Sentinel-3 level one and level two products. Then UMEDSAT distributes the products that were acquired over the open ocean. The European Space Agency distributes the products that were acquired over land and coastal areas. So for the open ocean products, you will find the recently acquired Sentinel-3 products on the CODA data hub. This data hub has a rolling archive over one year. The reprocessed data are distributed through the CODA rep interface. The archives 
older than one year are available on the archive.humedsat.int website. If you have a request on all Chi marine products, you can contact ops at humedsat.int. And if you are interested in using the CODA interface for your work, I also advise you to check the CODA user guide. Then uh, all uh, Sentinel-3 products acquired over land and coastal areas can be retrieved from the Copernicus Sci-Hub website. On this uh, Sci-Hub, the products are kept online for a month. Then they are moved offline and need to be asked back online before being available for retrieval. So in today's webinar, we're going to uh, download our product from the Sci-Hub um, data hub. But if you want further information or if you have uh, additional question on the Sci-Hub after this webinar, I also highly advise you to visit and to check the Sci-Hub user guide. And also, if uh, after uh, this webinar you have questions on all Qi or the Level 1B uh, products, you should uh, visit the technical guides that are available on the ESA website and on the UMEDSET website as well. So this being said, we can now move on on today's exercises. So today's case study will be uh, about demonstrating a simple and powerful way of detecting sargassum rafts uh, by processing Sentinel-3 Alchi products that were acquired on June 20th, 2018 in the Caribbean Sea. We will uh, process the products thanks to the SNAP software. So for those of you who are not uh, familiar with uh, the SNAP software, so SNAP is the Sentinel application platform. It's a free open source common architecture for all Sentinel toolboxes to read, process, and visualize the Sentinel 1, 2, and 3 products. You will find documentation, tutorials, links to products, use cases, and help desk on uh, the ESA STEP website. Also, I highly advise you to um, visit the STEP forum as uh, SNAP has been released and operational for several years and has a very active user community. So there's a chance if uh, when processing Sentinel-3 data using the SNAP software, if you have a question, someone else probably had the same question before. And um, this e issue has already been discussed in various threads. Also, the SNAP developers are very active on this forum and usually reply to inquiries within a few days. If you are uh, also further interested in ocean color monitoring with Sentinel-3 data, uh, please be aware that we have a previous webinar on ocean color monitoring with Sentinel-3, which is called uh, OSHA 04, and it is available on our YouTube channel. So for today's exercise, as I said multiple times, we are going to map sargassum rafts in the Caribbean. Our area of interest for today will be the red rectangle here. So if you are not um, familiar with um, sargassum and the uh, societal issues it has had for the past few years, I'm first uh, going to give some background on um, sargassum and uh, the associated issues, and then we will uh, move on to the practical part of the training. So 
Pelagic Sargassum seaweed is a large brown alga floating at the ocean surface thanks to its cast filled bladders. When present in reasonable amounts, it provides a safe habitat to many marine species, such as the threatened loggerhead sea turtle. A large panel of fish species like mahi-mahi, jacks, and amber jacks also use this floating vegetation as a nurse nursery. In the North Atlantic, pelagic sargassum floats and grows at the sea surface during its entire lifetime, aggregating and forming mats carried by winds, waves, and currents over very long distances. Since 2011, sargassum algae have been aggregating in rafts several kilometers wide. Massive stranding episodes have increased in periodicity and intensity in the Caribbean Sea, summer 2018 being the historical record so far. Once on the beaches, the rafts rot and decompose, leading to dramatic consequences on the environment, the tourism economy, and human health. It has hence become of prime importance to monitor these disastrous events, but their irregularity makes their, forec their forecasting complex. Moreover, the mechanisms at stake in the operation and arrival of the rafts on shores still need more studies. In situ observations from drones or boats constitute key tools to quantify the algae amount of available for stranding but their coverage in space and time remains limited. If you want more information about the sargassum life, life cycle, impact and mitigation strategies, you can check this excellent presentation from the EU for ocean observation. So with their high uh, spatial and temporal resolution and coverage, Ocean color satellites can help to fill in the gaps. For example, the satellite based Sargassum Watch systems provide monthly reports on the Sargassum situation based on MODIS, VIRS, and Landsat 8 images. It has not incorporated data from OLCHI so far. So this case study demonstrates a simple and powerful way of detecting sargassum rafts with the Sentinel-3 Alchi instrument on June 20th, 2018. The methodology presented here is inspired by the paper from Odi et al. that was published in 2019. So if after uh, the webinar, you want more information on the theoretical background behind uh, sargassum mapping with Olchi, I highly advise you to uh, have a look at the poster and the paper that were uh, written by Odi et al. So um, in this paper, the authors have uh, developed the maximum chlorophyll index computation adapted to the Olchi instrument. So this uh, MCI already existed for previous sensors and in the paper from Odiatol, they adapted it to um, the OLCHI sensor. So MCI is an algae index based on the red edge effect of floating vegetation. because there is an increase of the sargassum radiometric signal in the near infrared band. So it's the band uh, between 650 and 1200 nanometers. And we will uh, quantify these uh, red edge effects during the webinar. So the MCI is uh, computed from the difference between the top of atmosphere radiances in the central waveband lambda 2, where the red edge effect of the floating algae signal is at the maximum, and a linear baseline drawn between the two surrounding bands, lambda 1 and lambda 3. So for all chi, the central uh, 
um, wave band lambda 2 will be the 11th band. And so the two surrounding bands will be the 10th and 12th band. So here is a figure to help you understand um, how this MCI can highlight the presence of sargassum rafts. So on the left part of the figure, in blue, appear a clear water uh, pixel spectrum that was acquired by Olchi. So you can see that this spectrum has mainly a strong component in the blue part of the spectrum. In red, appears a uh, high chlorophyll pixel spectrum that was sensed by Olchi. So again, this spectrum has a strong component on in the blue part of the spectrum, but also a stronger component in the near infrared part of the spectrum. So by zooming in on band 10, 11, and 12, you can see that the differences between um, the, the radiance that was sensed at the wavelength lambda 2 and the linear baseline that is drawn between lambda 1 and lambda 3 is maximized in the high chlorophyll spectrum pixel compared to a clear water spectrum where um, this the difference between the acquired radiance and the linear baseline will be near zero or even negative. So this is how the MCI highlights the sargassum raft uh, presence in all cheap products. So this being said, we can move on to the practical part of our session. So during the exercise, I will first uh, present the Sentinel-3 data download. Then I will introduce you to the SNAP software. And then using SNAP, we will analyze and process the level 1B Alchi products. This will include uh, a generation and visualiz visualization of RGB images. The quantification of the ocean color spectrum sensed by Olchi on various pixels, a presentation on the quality flags, how we can compute a cloud mask out of Olchi products. Then we will see how to process multiple products to retrieve the MCI automatically. And uh, we'll finish with a discussion on the obtained results. So this is the Rus desktop of a Rus virtual machine. So basically, uh, once you have asked for a, a webinar re replaying and that the help desk has processed uh, your request and sent you your uh, VM URL and logins, you just have to access the VM URL, type in your logins, and you will land on this Rus desktop. Here, you can see the SNAP software that we will use later on. But first, we are going to download our product of interest. For this, you need to go to Application, Network, Firefox Web Browser. From this web browser, you directly land on the ESA Sci-Hub. Uh, to find the Sentinel-3 products, you need to go to the Open Hub, which is where all Sentinel data, so Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2, and Sentinel-3 products are stored. So as I was saying, all Sentinel data are freely available to users. But to download products, you first need to have an account on the Sci-Hub. So here I already have an account, but if you do not have any account, just hit 
a sign up button. Fill in the various fields. And then you will uh, receive an automatic uh, email to verify your email address. And once you have an account, you can use your credentials to simply log in. So I'm going to show you the procedure to download the Sentinel-3 images for June 20th, 2018. So first, with our mouse, we are going to drag the map to our region of interest, which is the Caribbean Sea. You can use the center wheel of your mouse to simply zoom in and zoom out on the side hub. Once you are over your region of interest, you can draw your area of interest by selecting the switch to navigation mode button here. Then with your mouse, simply draw a square. Then to define the search criteria, you need to hit the three horizontal bars at the left of the search bar here. This displays various options to, to tune your research. So what are we going to define here? First, we're going to define the sensing period. Uh, as I was uh, saying, we're only interested on June 20th, 2018. So I uh, just recall you that 2018 was the worst year so far for uh, Sargassum stranding events. June 20th as the start date and the end date will be on the same day that year. Then we're not interested in Sentinel-1 or Sentinel-2, but we're interested in the Sentinel-3 mission. So you can tick the Sentinel-3 mission. Here in the satellite platform, we would like products from Sentinel-3 and Sentinel-3A and Sentinel-3B. So just leave it blank. In the product type, we are interested in the OLG Level 1 full resolution products. You can also define your instrument of interest. So OLG, for example, here it's not necessary because the instrument is already defined through the product type and the OL character chain. You can also specify the product level. Here it's not mandatory as it's already specified through the product type. And you can also uh, define the, the timeliness so here we are interested in nine time critical or offline products. But again, here, since the product were acquired three years ago, only the offline products are uh, available for download. So once all of your criteria are defined, you simply need to hit the search button here. In our case, the search returns two results. You can see here the blue tiles. These blue tiles show you the geographical hold of each product. So there is one Sentinel-3A product and one Sentinel-3B product, almost entirely overlapping. So as you can see, one product appears offline and one product appear online. So both products should be offline as they were acquired more than a month ago. But here for the webinar, I have requested a product to be back online so that I can show you how you can download, download it. So first, for example, for the Sentinel-3A product, which is offline, we need to request it back online. For this, it's very simple. Just hit the download product arrow. This triggers the offline product retrieval. If it uh, doesn't work at the first trial, 
uh, like uh, it just did. You just need to uh, do it again. And then you can see that the offline product retrieval has been initiated. And then this product is automatically added to your cart. Then once the once the product is back online again, it will be like this Sentinel 3B product. You can simply download it by hitting the arrow again. Then you can select save file and hit OK. Here I have downloaded the products ahead of this webinar, so I'm not going to download it again. But this is how uh, you would do to uh, download your own data. Once the products are downloaded, they will be available in your home root folder as a zip archive. So first thing you need to do is to move these archives in the, the training uh, kit folder. So this training kit on the virtual machine is in shared training and here, OSHA 08, Sargassum Mapping Caribbean. Here, you will find several folders. So, original, to store the input data. Ox data, to store uh, the auxiliary data that we are going to need during this webinar, such as, for example, color ramps. And the processing folder, which will be used to store the output of our processing. There is also a PDF tutorial to help you go through the different steps of the processing. And that is complementary to uh, this video. So let's put the products here uh, in the original folder. So here I have done it ahead of the webinar. Then to extract the deep archive, you just need to use the extract here button here. So once they are extracted, you can see that both products are actually folders. So if we want to explore these folders, we can see that as I was explaining earlier, the measurements are stored in NetCDF files, and there is the manifest file here that we will use within Snap to open and explore our products. So let's now use Snap. Okay, so this is how Snap appears when you open it. Now to open a Sentinel-3 product using Snap, you can hit the open product icon here. You can also access it from file open product. Then you just need to navigate to your product of interest. So here, for example, the Sentinel-3A product and select the manifest.xml file and hit open. This way, the product opens within Snap and appears in the Product Explorer tab. Another way of opening a product is from a file browser. You just go, for example, here to the Sentinel-3B product and you just drag and drop the xfdu manifest.xml file. Sentinel 3B product opens up in Snap. Then you can expand the product content by hitting the key button here located left of each open product. So here you can see that the product is organized in several folders. And the main data of interest that we are going to process today, so the top of atmosphere radiances in the 21 spectral bands, is stored in the bands folder, OA radiance. So here you can see the data acquired by OLG in the 21 spectral bands. 
The other folders contain data that give additional information on the context of the measurements. For example, the masks folder encloses very useful information on the quality of the retrieval. The metadata folder contains static information about the product, such as the timestamp, the platform name, the observation mode, etc. If you want to check uh, the properties of a band, you just right click on a band and hit properties. There, you'll be able to check the name of the band, the description of the band, or the units. So now, as a first step, we would like to open a view of these products to at least be able to check um, the picture taken by the Olchi space camera on that day above the Caribbean Sea. So for this, right click on the product and hit open RGB image window. As I said earlier, here we're going to select the eighth band for red, the sixth band for green, and the fourth band for blue. Hit OK. And the RGB view opens within Snap. We can repeat the procedure for the Sentinel 3B product, open RGB image window. So eight for red, six for green, and four for blue. Hit OK. Then if you want to check both views at the same time, go to Window, Tile Horizontally. And then by selecting the hand button, you are able to navigate on the product. You can use the center wheel of your mouse to zoom in and out. If you want to synchronize both views, and if they are um, geographically overlapping, activate the Synchronizes Views Across Multiple Image Windows button and Synchronizes Cursor Positions Across Multiple Image Window button. This way, when you move on one product, you move on the other as well. And same for zooming in and out. Also, the word view tab will show you where on earth your products are located. So this view is very similar as the view we had on the Sci-Hub website. Now, I guess that you probably noticed that the images are a bit dark and not much is visible on them. So we are going to improve the visualization. For this, go to the Color Manipulation tab. And we are going to uh, change the color distribution for each red, green, and blue band. So we are going to move the slider to the beginning of the tail of the distribution for each component in order to bring more light to our product. You can see how the visualization is improved. We need to repeat the operation for the second product. So just so you know, you can also change a slider value by simply double clicking on its value and setting a new value. and 54. Now you can see that our products look better and we can distinguish several elements on both images. So first we notice that both Ulti A and Ulti B sensors show very similar patterns. And this is normal 
as the products were acquired 20 seconds apart and roughly cover the same area. The Sentinel-3A product name indicates that the measurements were collected between 1 p.m. 58 minutes and 49 seconds on June 20, 2018 and 2 p.m. 1 minute and 49 seconds when the Sentinel-3B measurements were acquired 20 seconds earlier. And on both views, we find the following elements. So wide areas covered in clouds at the upper left and lower right corners, sun glint on the right of the image, so sun glint occurs when sunlight reflects off the surface of the ocean at the same angle that the sensor is viewing the surface and it ultimately degrades the sensor observation. So we will not be able to retrieve any information in this part of the image. And at the center of the picture are our islands of interest, the Caribbean islands. So from these RGB views, it is very hard to distinguish where the potential sargassum rafts are located. So zooming in on particular areas, like this area, for example, can give us a hint. So here you can see subtle dark green patterns but they are not easy to spot with a bare eye on the RGB views. So another useful tool in SNAP is the optical spectrum view that allows you to check the spectrum of the ocean color signal per pixel. So when, when hovering over the image, you will see how the ocean color signal evolves from a pixel to another. Holding the shift key will automatically adapt the scale of the spectrum view. So for example, and as I was presenting earlier, on a dark blue pixel, the spectrum will have a strong component in the blue parts and a weaker component in the red and infrared parts. But when the cursor is located on a dark green pixel, you can see that there's still a strong component in the blue part of the spectrum, but a much stronger component in the infrared and near infrared part of the spectrum compared to a dark blue pixel. You can also, of course, explore how the spectrum varies over the islands or over clouds, for example. And to better assess the spectrum differences between our pixels, it would be nice to plot both spectra on the same view. So for this, we need to place pins on our images. So first, select the pin placing tool and place one pin, so for example, pin one over a dark blue pixel and one pin, pin two, over a dark green pixel. And then unselect the pin placing tool. In the spectrum view graph, select the show spectra for all pins button and unselect the show diagram, diagram grid. Um, sorry, unselect the show spectrum at cursor position. You can press the shift key to have a better scale. And so in this case, you can see how both uh, spectrum for like dark blue water pixel and dark green water pixel superimpose on the figure. So right clicking anywhere on the graph will display a selection of choices for setting your graph properties 
such as the title, the color of the title, the label, etc. You can also export your graph as a PNG file. And you can also export the graph values as a CSV file. If you want to manage your pin color and name, or if you want to delete a pin, go to View, Tool Windows, and hit Pin Manager. There, you will be able to control your pin options. So you can, for example, for pin one, change the name, switch the name to clear water cell. You change the name to high chlorophyll content cell. And you can also, for example, change the color of the high chlorophyll content pixel to red. And here you find the figure that I presented uh, to you at the beginning of the webinar. And so changing a pin color and name will automatically adapt it in the Spectrum View window. Okay, so this tool is very useful to assess how um, the Spectrum evolves from a region to another. So, Analyzing the, the ocean color spectrum collected by Olchi can tell us a great deal about the ocean optical constituents content. We just saw that the spectrum collected by Olchi in the various bands varies a lot from one pixel to another. And so it is this shift in the ocean color spectrum that the maximum chlorophyll index exploits to highlight the areas where the probability of presence of sargassum rafts is maximized. So now we can close our spectrum view as I want to introduce you to one additional aspect about the, the old chi level 1B product. Alongside the top of atmosphere radiances in the 21 spectral bands, the old chi level 1 products contain a set of flags that give contextual elements around the measures. So to display the different masks, as for the pin manager, go to view tool windows and select mask Ma mask manager so from here so you can expand the name a little bit to know what the mask is about at least so for from there you can activate or deactivate a particular mask like this you can also change the color of a mask and you can also set its transparency. So these masks are very useful to know, for example, whether the, the measures were, were acquired on land or over the ocean, to know where the coastline is, etc. So for this study, we would like to ignore land pixels, so characterized by quality flags land, and cloudy pixels, as Olchi is not able to see through clouds, so we will not be able to detect the sargassum rafts that are underneath the clouds. However, there is no cloud flag in the Olchi Level 1 product. So we need to compute our own cloud mask uh, using a snap processor called IDPix for Olchi. So what is IDPix for Olchi? The IDPix processor for Olchi retrieves a set of pixel classification attributes, such as clear cloudy, land water, snow ice, etc. And the implementation of the features calculation is instrument specific, meaning that there is an IDPix processor per supported instrument. So, for example, there is an IDPix for MSI on board Sentinel-2, an IDPix for Olchi on board Sentinel-3, an IDPix for Maurice on board Envisat, etc. So, if this is your first use of the IDPix processor, the plugin first needs to be downloaded and installed. 
installed in Snap beforehand. So for this, go to Tools, Plugins, and this open the Plugin Manager interface. In the Available Plugin tab, you will find all the plugins available for download. And here you will find the IDPix plugin for the various sensors. So you just need to select the IDPix plugin that you want to install and hit install. Uh, here I've already downloaded the plugin beforehand, so I'm not uh, going to install any more IDPix plugins. But be aware then to complete the installation, you'll need to restart Snap. And hence, if you want to carry out uh, the end of the exercise, you'll need to import the products within Snap again. OK. So we are going to apply several processing steps to both products. So first, cloud identification with IDPix. Then we'll perform a spatial subset to crop the product to our area of interest. Then we will compute the MCI. Then we will add the new MCI band to the output product. And uh, we will finally reproject the product to define a coordinate reference system. So repeating these steps for every image one by one would be very time consuming. For this reason, we can create a graph containing all the steps of our methodology and use the batch processing option of SNAP to run bulk processing. So how do you create a graph? For this, you need to go to Tools, Graph Builder. By default, an empty graph opens up with a read and a write operator. So to avoid any confusion, right-click on the right operator and delete it. So in the graph builder, we will not define any parameters in the tabs. They will be defined in the batch processing step, where we will apply this processing for both images we have downloaded at once. So in the graph builder, we will only create and save our graph. So first, as I was saying, we need to compute the cloud mask out of the Alchi band. So to add the IDPix operator, so be sure the plugin is installed first, right click anywhere and go to add, optical, pre-processing, IDPix Alchi. And then immediately after adding the operator, go to the IDPix Alchi tab here and make sure to untick the Compute Cloud Shadow option, as this option makes the Snap software crash. So once this is done, you simply connect the read operator to the IDPix processor. To connect two block, start from the right of the block to create a red a row and drag it to the following block. Now our two blocks are connected. Then we need to compute a subset of the image, since we want to focus only over a defined area, and we do not need the whole extent of the products. So to add a subset operator, go to Add, Raster, geometric subset. And you can connect the IDPix Alchi to the subset operator. The next processing step will consist in deriving the MCI for the pixels that are not flagged as cloudy by the IDPix processor and that are not land pixels. For this task, we will use BenMath. So again, to add the BenMath operator, Go to Add, Raster, BenMath. And you can connect the subset operator to the BenMath block. In batch processing mode, the output of the BenMath operator is the computed band. So in our case, MCI only. 
So in our product, we would like to save some additional data, such as reflectances and product flags. So to merge the MCI band with the subsetted product bands, we will use the add raster band merge operator. So this will be used to merge the bands from the subset operator and from the bond math operator. So we need to connect both the subset block and bond math block to the bond merge block. Then to define a specific coordinate reference system to our output product, go to add raster geometric reproject. Then simply connect the bond merge block to the reproject block. Finally, we're going to save our output product. So add input output right. And we simply need to connect all blocks all together. Finally, once your graph is completed, we just need to hit save here on the lower part of the panel and save the graph to training OSHA 08 OX data. And for example, you can name it MCI underscore graph dot XML. Then we don't need the graph builder anymore. We can just close the graph builder. Now we need to use our graph to apply it to both our products here. So for this, we'll use the batch processing tool. So first, we need to load the graph we just created. That's in training, OSHA 08, OX data, MC, uh, MCI underscore graph dot XML. Once the graph is loaded, you can see all the different tabs here. In the input output parameters tab, unselect the keep source product name, as this will be defined in the right tab here. In the same option, add all open products within Snap and hit refresh, just to be sure that all information have been, has been taken into account. So you can see that both Sentinel-3A and Sentinel-3B products have been added to the input product of our graph. Then let's move on to the IDPX all chip processor. So first we need to define the top of atmosphere radiances and top of atmosphere reflectances that will be written to the output product. So, as explained earlier, for the MCI computation, we need the 10th, 11th, and 12th bands. You can also select in the top of atmosphere reflectances, the four, six, and eighth bands in order to have it saved in the output product if you want to still be able to generate an RGB view later on. So what is the difference between radiance and reflectance? So radiance is the variable directly measured by remote sensing instruments. So it is the amount of light seen by the instrument from a surface of an object. Whereas the reflectance is the ratio, so it's a percentage of the amount of light leaving a target to the amount of light arriving at the target. And it has no units. So it's scaled and uh, it is the property of the observed object or material. Also in this window, leave the compute a cloud buffer option selected and uh, leave the default value of two. This option simply dilates the IDP cloud mask with a two pixel buffer to deal with cloud edges and cloud shadow. One point I forgot to mention to select multiple bands, 
you need to maintain the control shift uh, the control key then let's move on to the subset tab so a subset has two components a band subset if you want to get rid of specific bands here we already selected our bands of interest in the idpx tab so in the subset tab we will keep all bands so to select all bands simply use the keyboard shortcut control a Then select geographic coordinates to compute the spatial subset and define your polygon of interest. So here I will simply copy and paste the expression of our polygon and hit update. Then you can hit the zoom in button in the top right hand corner. And you see our area of interest is, is well within the product. So this expression simply defines the corners of our polygon, first longitude and then latitude of each corner. And the last corner is repeated twice to make sure that the polygon is complete. Then in the band math tab, we're going to compute the MCI. So the name of the band will be MCI. The no data value will be set to not a number, none. And to define the expression, hit edit expression. Here I'm simply copying and pasting the expression. So if the pixel is not on land, and if it's not covered in cloud, or if it's not been flagged as a cloud buffer, then we compute the MCI. Otherwise, the output will be not a number. Here we can see that Snap didn't detect any errors. Just simply hit OK. Then in the bond merge tab, simply use the keyboard shortcut Control A. And you can see that in our output product, we will have all the bands from the subset tab, but also the MCI band. In the reproject tab, we will define our CRS. We will set it for to UTM WGS84. And unselect reproject type one grids as we don't need this information in the output product. Finally, in the right cell, we can keep the default name for the output product. So this name is simply the name of the input with the processing steps, steps we have applied to it. So projected, subset, and IDPix. We will save it as BIMDMAP, which is the default snap data format. And we will save our output product to train a, training OSHA 08 processing. Okay. And then once all of this is defined, simply hit run here. And your two product will be processed within 15 minutes. Here I've uh, processed the products ahead of this webinar so that we don't lose 15 minutes just staring at the screen. So I'm not going to process the products. But I'm going to open the processed products that you can obtain by uh, doing the processing by yourself. So to open a BIM DMAP product, simply select the DIM product and drag and drop it to the snap interface. Then by expanding the product again and the bands folder, you can see here the MCI band. So before opening the MCI, we can close our RGB views and open the MCI views of both products. So you can see that the default view is a black and white view. So to add a color ramp, 
can go to color manipulation, basic, and from there you'll be able to uh, find a set of predefined color bars here. To better visualize the MCI, we define a specific we have defined a specified a specific sorry color bars that so to load it simply hit, uh, hit the import color palette from text file and you can navigate to shared training OSHA 8 ox data MCI underscore Olchi dot CPD then hit open it then asks you to automatically distribute points of color palette between min and max just hit no so here now you can see that you only have two color bars set as default. So I'm just going to show you a trick. Uh, the default snap color ramp are stored in res and to in and in the dot snap folder. So to make it appear, go to view, show hidden files. Here you can go to dot snap. Ox data, color palette, and here you will find all the default color palette. And if you want to have the MCI color palette appear as a default uh, color ramp, you can simply copy and paste the MCI file to uh, this folder. Okay. And of course, we need to repeat uh, this procedure for the second product. So to, once the view has been correctly defined for one product, you can export the settings to other band. So here, the other MCI band and hit OK. Again, hit No. And if you go to Window Tile Horizontally, you can have a simultaneous view of both products. So to enhance the view, we can also activate the land flag as well as the cloud flags and set their color to light gray. So you can see that actually nothing was computed over land and cloud. And here again, we can activate the cloud and change the color to light gray and activate the quality flags land. So in the output product, the light blue areas correspond to the dark water region that we saw earlier on the RGB views. The sargassum rafts are easily identified by the yellow stripes here. So you can see that on that day, there was quite a lot, there were quite a lot of sargassum rafts around the Caribbean islands. If you're interested in a particular view to export, you can simply right click anywhere on the view, select export view as image, make sure to select full resolution, view region, and then save at various file formats. And one very interesting feature on this picture is here you can see how some rafts seem to mark current meanders and edges borders and centers. Here. We can also observe that most sargassum rafts present east-west thin filament structures, like here, for example, that are most probably caused by wind. So finally, if you want to um, export the result of your processing as a uh, GOT, for example, for further processing in SNAP, make sure to select your ex export product, then File, Export, GOTIF, and you can save it in Processing. 
bit also subset here. And here hit select none and only export the MCI band. You can also unselect all metadata and hit OK. Here a window appear, hit no. Again, hit no and hit export product. Once the product is in GOT format, we can further analyze it and process it in, in QGIS. So for example, you can use open QGIS. In XYZ tile, just load the OpenStreetMap layer by drag and drop. And then by drag and drop, we can also load our GeoTIFF. You can see that again, it's black and white. But what we can do is double clicking on the product. In the render type, select single band pseudo color. We are going to use a predefined color bar here. So you can, of course, define your own color bars. But here I have generated it earlier. And in training, OSHA 08, OX data, select MCI color QGIS, hit open, apply, and OK. You can just now enjoy the results and see again all the Sargassum rafts in QGIS. So now some uh, concluding uh, remarks before, before uh, moving on to the Q&A session. So the satellite imagery is widely used to detect and map floating vegetation. So Spaceborne technologies offer a frequent and global coverage of our oceans. As this exercise uh, highlighted, simple index computations based on the red edge spectral properties of the sargassum in the near real infrared part of the spectrum allow a relatively easy detection of large rafts. The Sentinel-3 constellation constitutes a valuable asset to map sargassum distribution at large scales on a frequent basis. Furthermore, the OLCHI products could be combined with other sensors to create multi-sensor products and hence ensure a gap-free coverage of the Caribbean Sea. However, satellite data presents some drawbacks and in-situ data remain essential to create a reliable sargassum monitoring system. OLCHI spatial resolution of 300 meters limits the detection of smaller aggregations. The tropical Atlantic Ocean also often experiences Saharan dust plumes that may decrease the sargassum signature in the near infrared and hence make the MCI computation unreliable. In addition to these dust episodes, sun glint, clouds, and haze that are typical to tropical regions create further gaps in the observations. Olchi captures very well the floating algae at the very surface of the ocean, but sargassum located a few centimeters below the surface are not well detected. It's also very challenging to discriminate sargassum from other floating vegetation or even from other floating material, such as plastic and oil that have a similar spectral signatures in the near infrared. Finally, detecting rafts is not equivalent to accurately quantifying the sargassum biomass available for strandings on coasts. MCI is not a concentration measure, but an indicator to highlight the areas covered by potential sargassum rafts. A pixel flagged by the MCI may be composed of several sub-pixel sized aggregations, which can reach a depth of half a meter. As a conclusion, the MCI computed out of all cheap products is a very efficient tool for detecting the position of floating material rafts under relatively clear sky conditions, but complementary information is needed to fill in the gaps in satellite ocean color data and quantify the biomass available for stranding. Moreover, monitoring and forecasting these disastrous aggregations requires that other sea state parameters, such as the wind strength and direction, 
wave height or currents be taken into account. For more explanation, do not forget to read the article from Audi et al, which inspired this exercise. So I would like to thank you for your attention. And now I'm going to move on to the Q&A session. Before moving on to the Q&A session, I just want to show you, uh, sorry, how you can replay this webinar using a Rust virtual machine. So if you go to the Rust portal and hit login register, if you do not have any account, you need to create an account and fill in all the fields again. Here I have an account, so login, simply login. And then from your service tab and your training activities, you can ask to replay the OSHA 08 webinar here. Click this box and request a webinar training. Okay, so now I can properly move on to the Q&A session.